you have to be one-on-one -on -one with a trainer. Like you have to sleep, eat. Hey, it's Nan Uplifting Others. If you're new here, welcome. If you're a recent subscriber, hey, Uplifters. So women have taken on the trucking industry by storm. And that's a good thing. Shout out to all the women that are truckers. Shout out to y'all. So how I came across this article and it's talking about or thinking about it. Some, some have unfortunately been sexually assaulted during their experience in trucking school. It's a male dominated industry. We all know that. I'm saying that every man is a predator. That's not what I'm saying because we know that's not to be true. But sexual assault normally takes place or happens during driver's training. And that is because you have to be one-on-one -on -one with a, a trainer. You have to be in closed confinement with the trainer. Like you have to sleep, eat, with the trainer. And to be clear, it's on the road training. A lot of times victims are put in vulnerable situations to where they don't know how to report the situation. They don't know what to do. They don't know how to even handle it or navigate it once it has happened. Some trainers exploit power dynamics. They feel like they're superior because I'm training you. It's unwanted advances, verbal harassment, actual assault. There's so much that goes behind it for people that are actually predators. Many survivors say that their reports were ignored, dismissed, or faced retaliation. And that created silence and fear. It's never okay to have to experience something like that, but then in the workplace, you're trying to make money, you're trying to support yourself and your family, and this is happening. You can't do a job without someone possibly trying to hurt you, and that's never okay. I have some statistics that I want to read to you from this website. I'll leave the link in the description box. Approximately 8% of sexual assaults on women in the United States occur in the workplace. Certain occupational conditions such as late night or early morning work hours, working along or in isolated locations, interaction with the public and mobile workplaces can elevate the risk. In long haul truck drivers, num numbering about 200,000 in the United States are exposed to many of these risk factors. <sighs> these statistics. Of these 132,000 drive with a partner and 99,000 with their intimate partners. The, nat the nature of their job frequently involves driving during the night, parking in secluded or high crime areas, and interacting with a mix of familiar and, and unfamiliar individuals. Like, I feel like reading all of this is really important because there's no pretty much boundary what a predator can do and will do to somebody. Half of sexual assault survivors are African-American or Caucasian women, commonly young to middle-aged, single, and from lower-income households. This is findings indicate the need for future research to identify specific risk factors for female truck drivers and compare them with women in non-male dominated professions. Though This would help create effective interventions and reporting policies related to sexual assault, Additionally, examining physical and psychological consequences in female truck drivers post-assault is essential to formulating treatment plans and coping strategies. That is a shortage of truck drivers in the United States. One factor for this shortage is driver's safety concerns in America, particularly for women. Women make up just 8% of the total truck drivers in the United States because of safety and workplace harassment. I feel like workplaces in general need to change their outlook on sexual harassment and sexual assault. People tend to not believe victims when it first happened. They don't wanna do anything about it because it makes them uncomfortable. They are part of the problem and they've done it to others. They don't know how to address the issues. They don't wanna lose that particular person that has sexually assaulted, harassed, or any of those things. They don't know how to hold people accountable for their messed up actions. And it has to stop in every workplace. I feel like it should be a better way about it. Um, Even if it's crazy how sometimes if you would tell a female on a female, like you say if you're talking to a coworker and they're a female and you're a female, telling them that 
our boss has been sexually harassing me. He's been leaving me inappropriate pictures um, via email, and I don't know what to do about it. And you'll have some females that we say, would say, just, it's okay. Like, that's our boss. Like, just just go with the flow of things. Don't worry about it. Like, just don't say anything. Um, that could potentially cause you to lose your job. And by people being like that in the workplaces and people having that mindset of, oh, don't do that because you can do, something can happen to you. It's, we have to change the way that we think about things when it comes down to that. Because safety is number one. And can, trying to convince somebody to not report assaults or harassment is never okay. Just help them get through it if they want to report it. Be their support system. You never want to steer somebody away from not reporting. Don't be the reason why something gets worse for somebody and somebody actually getting assaulted or them trying to um, unalive themselves because of what is going on at work. We have to change the way we see assault in general. Let's watch and make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe.